Hallelujah. God bless you. And welcome to another night of Bible study. I am Apostle Dr. Dawn Nichol Manning, and I am glad to be with you on tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you all, but I feel good in my deep down soul. I just feel so good. I'm just so excited. Uh, you, you know, before we get into um, the study for tonight, I'm going to be talking about uh, fasting. We're going to be talking about fasting. We just got off our solemn assembly was called uh, January 2nd to the 6th. And every night of our solemn assembly, we joined together in prayer. And I'm telling you, we had breakthrough. We had testimony. We had um, just God just just lifting burdens and just showing us the newness of what he has for us in this season and for this time. And I'm just telling you, when we, when the saints of God get together, uh, fret not yourselves amongst the brethren, When it, especially when it's a call for prayer. I tell you, when it's a call for prayer, God tells you to come together to pray, expect for things to happen on a greater level. Hallelujah. So I just thank God. I'm, I'm still rejoicing. Um, as we came off of the fast, I'm still I can't, I can't even go back to how I was eating before. Um, I, um, I, we were doing the Daniel fast and just fruits and vegetables and my system, hallelujah, has been so, uh, feeling so, uh, vibrant and so good that I don't want to go back and I don't want to mess it up. So it's just like, you know, God has just been leading and guiding me. And then, um, as studying his word, you know, he's showing me the benefits of fasting. So that's what I want to share with you all over the next um, sessions of Bible study. But I feel good coming into 2024. I'm going to tell you how God has blessed me and get excited with me. Don't don't judge me, but get excited with me because what is great to me, it may not be all that to you, but bless God that is blessing me. All right. So come on and celebrate with me. So blessed be the name of the Lord who allows for us to triumph through Jesus Christ. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm glad about it. And uh, I'm just glad because I know this is a, a great, this is going to be a great year. It's it's no doubt, of course, as we sojourn through this life that we're going to face obstacles, but that's not going to change the fact that God is still great. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But I know this, this year we're going to face our challenges and that's okay. That's okay. But we're going to win anyway, because that's what the word says. We win. We win. We overcome. We're more than conquerors. We're victorious through Christ Jesus. So we, we got this. You got this. Hallelujah. You know what? Eating healthy does not mean that your food has to be nasty. No. I mean, there's a, a, a lot of recipes and things out here that um, taste good. Once again, they will... Um, revitalize your body, make you feel rejuvenated, and it's healthy for you, and it'll keep you in good health. See, the thing is this, God desires for our, um, for us to prosper and be in good health as our soul prospers. What does that mean? God delivered us. For those of us who have come into the knowledge of who he is, and we have submitted ourselves, and we have accepted him into our lives, and we said, Lord, come in, Lord, your will be done in my life. Now God says, all right, your soul is going to prosper because that's what his word says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes upon him should have life everlasting, right? So now that means that you are in good standing. Your soul is going to prosper, but it says that he desires for us to, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to be in good health. I, 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 and he wants us to prosper as our soul prosper because now we've come into the place of salvation. But now God wants us in a place where we will be able to experience the joy of salvation. He wants us to be ex to experience the blessings and the promises coming to pass, being manifested. And you want to be in good health so that you can experience that. You, you we and that's why it's so important. I know people say, am I going to go to hell because um, you know, I smoke? Am I going to go to hell because you know, I drink? It's not the concept of that's going to send you to hell. It's the concept of understanding that you are the temple of the living God. That do, that God he created you in such a way so that you can function properly and when you put things into your system knowingly that it has toxins in it or that it has uh, chemicals in it or it has a negative effect and that it can cause harm to your body because these things specifically have caution on it. They, these The packaging of cigarettes, the alcohol, by law, they have to have some type of caution, uh, 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 caution 
um, uh, a wording on those products so that those who consume it, they are aware that this product product can cause harm to your body. So it's you're no, you're in the knowing of what this can do to your body and you still intentionally decide to use it. That's not using wisdom because you're you're it's called self-affliction, you know? It's called self-affliction. And I know some people somebody says squash. That sounds good, Mother Smith. That sounds good. Squash. Yes. You know, uh, you can hook some squash up, season it. Right. Oh, yes. Squash is good. You giving me an idea for some recipes for uh, that cabbage uh, salad too, Verbena. Y'all giving me some ideas for recipes for the rest of the week. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, um, you know, I know a lot of people, once again, they ask, is that going to cause me to go to hell? Because I, if if I consume alcohol and this that, and the other, the thing is, you have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself so that you can be in good health. Right. You don't want to do anything self-inflicting that's going to cause harm to your body. Right. All right. Uh, Bishop said he's he has cheese crackers and grapes. Make sure you save me some. <laughs> all right. Uh, save me some. Don't eat them all. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's just it's a, a it's a blessing when God gives you understanding and he gives you knowledge so that you can be in a place where you can better yourselves. And that's what it's about when we walk this walk of salvation. We want to be in a better place, a better state of mind. We want to be in a better place spiritually. And we want for God to bring us to a place where we can experience who he is and where we're, where we're able to be uh, a happy the ability to, to, to function properly as we experience this walk with him. So let me pull this up. Let me, let me, I had to use another device. So just give me a minute. Y'all come on, tell me what you, what you, what you eating uh, tonight, sister charity, what you, what you have tonight? We just sharing. That's all we sharing. We're going to trust me. We're going to get in the word. I just need to put these devices to act right, but we're going to get in the word, but we're talking about fasting. And how fasting uh, is beneficial to our, just not to our uh, bodies, but to our spirit, to our souls. It helps. I know that while we were on the fast, as we were sharing, some people said that, you know, they caught headaches and things like that. When you're on a fast and you're cleansing yourself, your body is detoxing. It's purging. So that's one of the effects of your body purging. You start to get like headaches. Um, but when you continue to hydrate yourself and when we say hydrate, um, you, you have to realize water is not enough. Just H2O is not enough. You need H3O. What is H3O? That means that you need to be hydrated. The hydrogen that is in fruits, such as melons, right? Melons, watermelon, uh, honeydew melon, um, cantaloupe, okay? And a uh, cucumber, um, lemon, those things you can um, f infuse your water, your re liquid water, make squeeze those products in it or um, let those um, cut it up and let those um, uh, types of fruits settle in your water and then consume it because now you're you're really high um, becoming hydrated because now you're getting also the um, hydrogen and the oxygen from the fruits that produce that H3O so that you uh, are substantial and what you need to remain hydrated. So that's something that's important. I know a lot of people just think that drinking water is enough because you can drink a lot of water and still be dehydrated because you're not consuming the uh, uh, proper um, nourishment from um, certain fruits and vegetables. All right, y'all. This, this, I don't know what's going on with this these devices, but it's coming up. It's just taking a minute. On. Okay, here we go. I had to pull my notes up in another way. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Enemy, you do not have the victory. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. God is good. So we come to this place of understanding that fasting um, is for spiritual um, purposes and that it's it's intentional that we uh, we we set aside time for fasting. That's why we had our solemn assembly at the top of the year, um, January 2nd to um, the 6th. That's when our ministry, that's when we went into fasting and our solemn assembly. We, we're, we called ourselves together into a place where and we can 
dedicate that time to the Lord. And I think at the top of the year is important to do that because it gives you that ability to have foresight of how God is leading you down to the course of the remainder of the year. It's so important, you know, that you go into the year with clarity of understanding and reasoning. So look with me at first Corinthians seven, five, it says, do not deprive each other, except perhaps by mutual consent and for time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Fasting is, it empowers your self-control. Yes, it does. Because when you fast, what you are actually doing, you're disciplining yourself. You are commanding your flesh to come under subjection to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because some of us, we can consume and eat food and snack and nibble all day long. But it's when we say with intention and with our mind truly set to say, "Uh uh-uh, it's time to close this. It's time to shut it down. And it's time for us to clear our thoughts so that we can meditate, so that we can hear from the Lord, so that when we speak to him and when we pray to him and meditate, we're able to be clear in thought so that we're clearly hearing from the Lord. So as 1 Corinthians 7, 5, it presents itself, it's letting us know that we have to set time aside. We have to make sure that we we, um, we consent for a time to devote ourselves to prayer and that we, for the sake, for the enemy not to tempt us. Remember when Jesus fasted, he went, a day, he went away for 40 days and 40 nights and that old enemy came and he tried to tempt Jesus while he was in the midst of him fasting, right? And, and, and Jesus, he resisted the enemy because his body was so purged that his spirit, his spirit, first Jesus knew who he was. He was the son of God. But spending that time with God, let me tell you something. When you spend time with God, when you consent and make time for God and you spend time in his presence and you are seeking him, people who come around you with demonic, who are demonically influenced, they do not move you. They don't. They will come around you, you know, you know that they're not being genuine. You know that they're, uh, you know, they don't lie. You know, they uh, said some things that were evil against you. You know that they have not been operating and operating in the spirit of kindness and you know it and they will come to you and you will not be faced because the Holy Spirit, you've been in the presence of God in such a way that you disciplined yourself, that there's a calmness about you. There is a, a there is an aura about you that gives off the glory of God that when people come into your presence, I want you to always remember this. Don't don't get nervous or don't feel bad when you are side eyed, because some I'm telling you this when you are in the presence, especially when you come off of a fast, when you have been in the presence of God, people are going to look at you strange a little bit. People make it quiet around you. It's because you are emanating and you're letting off and you're exuding what God has placed on the inside of you during your time of fasting. That's why it's important when you come off of your fasting that you make sure you situate yourself in places that you belong as a child of God. Ah, yes, I said it. You can't come off of a flat, off of a fast and then go to the club. Mm-mm. See, sometimes we go to places that angels dare not even dread. No. You're not supposed to sit in the seat of the scornful. That's not our place to sit in the seat of the scornful. It's not our place to sit in these places where righteousness is not being upheld. That's not for us to do. So we got to be mindful of our surroundings. We have to be mindful of who we're going around. If we, Of course, we have to go to work. That God knows where we have to go, but I'm just letting you know, sometimes you're going to go to work and people are going to look at you differently. Like, Ooh, what's up with this one? And this sound or, you know, sometimes people tip around you and it's not that you're doing anything to be prideful or puffed up, but I just want you to understand you're getting side eyed or you're getting looked at as something might be like, what's going on with you. It's because of the glory of God that you've allowed to spend time uh, with him where it's now being it's being seen through your character. It's being seen through who you are. So uh, it, it's it's important that you understand that because I know sometimes people say um, they feel strange or sometimes people not treating them the same way, this, that, and the other. Let me tell you something. When God is taking you from glory to glory, when God is taking you from levels from a from one level to the next level, 
you're going to shed off some people. That's that's just it. You <laughs> that's it. You're going to you're go, some people are going to shed. When I say shed, you know how a dog sheds skin like when the seasons change, you have some dogs they shed their skin. Well, spiritually speaking, some of us are going to shed people. People are going to shed. They're going to they're going to sever themselves from us because where God is taking you, they may not be ready to go. And see, then God, what he does, when, let me tell you something, anything that's depleted from your life, and when God does it, trust and believe, it's going to be replenished with something greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When that begins to happen, trust and believe God's going to place men and women of God around you that's going to be encouraging, that's going to be uplifting, that's going to walk with you during this time. You are never alone. The word says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We are never alone. Don't ever think that you are alone. God has a remnant. God has special people that he has a, that He has designed to be around you, to be that encouragement that you need, that to be, to be those um, that are going to be there that's going to pray for you and pray with you. With you okay so I don't want you to feel like you're going to be alone oh no I don't think I'm I don't want to go on a fast I don't want to fast if that's going to happen I don't want to lose my friends let me tell you something whatever you're going to lose or whatever it needs to be severed for your from your life so that God can take you to the next level where you need to go it will be replenished with something greater stop holding on to things that are going to keep you down stop holding on to things because you are comfortable with it and you are familiar with it let God arise in your life and those things that need to be scattered let them be scattered because what God has for you, it is greater. It's beyond what you can think, imagine, or believe. This is why the enemy wants to keep us in a place where we feel like, oh, you know what? Uh-uh. They call it for a fast. Oh man, that's around the time that we going to have a holiday. That's around the time I want to do a barbecue. And then don't let food be your God. Let me tell you something, putting your plate down for a day. Putting your plate down for three days, putting your day, plate down for a week. If God calls you to do a 30 day fast or whatever, let, let me tell you something. When you're being called to that, it's because God has something great for you. See, it's in those moments of fasting and praying. That's when we begin to get insight and wisdom for our life's journey. And do you really think the enemy wants you to have insight and wisdom? No, he doesn't. So what does he, what does he do? He keeps you bottled down thinking that, oh, I, I got to, I, I can't, I can't fast now because I got this party to go to. I can't fast now because I have this event to go to. When God says, shut it down, shut it down. In 2024, the outpour that God, the divine outpour that God has for his people, we can't hesitate when he tells us to do something. We have to have an obedient spirit. Fasting. What does fasting do for us? It repairs. It restores. Um, let's talk about this uh, physically. What's happening in your body? Your body is actually constantly, when you start to repair itself, when you fast, it starts to repair itself on its own. Because the body starts first and foremost flushing out impurities, toxins, and things of that nature. And as while you're not eating, what your organs are now doing, they are in a sense relying on it's the way God created the system. So now what does that do? That allows for your um, your blood cells to produce more oxygen so that now it can... It, it, it goes, it feels like it needs to survive, but that survival mode is just working on the fact, okay, my body is not getting the food or, I'm, or the habitual things that you used to eat. So now I have to rely on making sure that I'm, I'm working on replenishing what's being lost. So now your oxygen levels, they begin to heighten. Um, your energy levels, they begin to heighten. Even your muscles and your tendons become repaired. That's why people who are dealing with like arthritis, and I say this to the congregants of love of Jesus, do not, do not say that I can't fast because I'm a certain age. Use wisdom. You can fast, but just make sure you know what you're doing. Now, I'll be honest with you. 
I'm 51 years old. I used to, when I was younger, especially when I was attending Oral Roberts University, I used to do fast, the 40 day fast, and I used to do it and it was like nothing. But you at 51 years old, my lifestyle is a little different. God knows where I'm at. So it's just like I because of once again of my schedule, my work, dealing with children or what have you. I'm not always able to do it at that extended length. But Lord, when I retire, if I pray that I because I used to love those fasts. I'm telling you those 40 days fast when I was in my 20s and my 30s and when I used to go on those 40 day fasts. I could walk down the street and God would, I just, I could hear stuff. Like I could, I saw stuff spiritually. And for those of you who don't get it, I'm not expecting for you to get it. Don't, you know, cause people are, oh, she's strange. She's great. No, I have all of my right mind. Yes, I do. But spiritually, I am who I am in Christ. And when I fasted on those fasts for 40 days and I would do those, fasts, I'm telling you, sometimes I could walk down the street and God can show me an individual and how they were operating and what they were doing and so that I would be aware and so that I would be in the know I would be sitting somewhere and God would give me a plan he would give me a strategy some projects that I would be working on he would show me how to lay it out my, um, my businesses the things that I was working on he would show me how to set it up and arrange it I'm telling you those those times with the Lord see I was single I didn't have no children hallelujah it was just me and the Lord. That's why, you know, Paul said, learn to abase and abound. No, you, you got to know how to be content. Wherever God has you, be content. Because I'm telling you, when I was single and I had that opportunity just to spend time in the presence of the Lord, there were no distractions. There were no, you know, real responsibilities that I had to take care of. It was just me and God. Oh, and it felt so beautiful. It felt so good. Hallelujah. See, but when you get into a place, when you become married, when you have children, you know, you, you have to make sure before you go on the fast, you got to let your spouse know, right? You have to let them know because you can't um, deny one another so that you have to prepare one another. So you got a sweetheart, I'm going on a fast and you know, it's going to be for a week and you know, this, that, and the other, this, that, and the other. You have to share that, right? But when you single and the Lord call you on them fasts and you feel like, ooh, you could just do it. And it's just like you don't have to answer to anybody. You don't have to say anything. It's just you and the Lord. And it's such a beautiful time. But um, as our life changes, God understands us. And, I, and that's another thing about fasting. I don't want people to feel guilty. Um, you know, oh, I can't do, uh, you know, the week. But I did do three days. God is going to honor you for your commitment. And, you know, the next go round. That three days will turn into four if the Lord should lead you. That four day will turn into a five and so on and so on. So just, just be thankful in where God is calling you and how he's telling you to fast. There are different types of fasting like um, intermittent fasting. Um, intermittent fasting is when you make sure that you have slotted out a time span during the course of the day where you intentionally make it up in your mind that you're not going to eat. That can be from... 12 noon up until 6 p.m. And you say, I'm not going to eat, you know, period. That That's it. I'm not going to eat. You know, whatever time frame that may be, that's intermittent fasting. Um, you know, we use the word um, consecrate. Um, you know, I'm on a consecration. Some people consecrate, meaning that every day they have dedicated maybe three hours, four hours or what have you, where in they're in a place of prayer, meditation, and there's no substance of food. So we have these different patterns of fasting. But the whole matter is to make sure that we are connecting ourselves with our Heavenly Father, that we're giving ourselves opportunity to hear from on high. That's what fasting is about. It's not necessarily about losing weight. Don't don't you know, don't go into it for that. One of the side benefits. Yes. Um, but it's not for that purpose. Your fasting is for you, first and foremost, to set time aside to be content uh, with the Lord to have that that space and that time with the Lord and to discipline yourself to so that you can be strengthened spiritually to resist the enemy to resist the carnal things of this world you you know how people stay strong and, and I say this all the time when I see people acting up that call themselves men and women of God and I see them uh doing things that are carnal I'm like you're not fasting and praying I, I gotta say it I have to say it when I see, you know, people of God, they fall in and I'm like, wait a minute. Why are you huddled up in that 
corner gossiping about such as that you're not fasting and praying you're not fasting and praying see because when you fast and pray your spirit man becomes so strong it does not want to go and be a part of certain things at all period period and it's not once again you trying to be puffed up or prideful it's just that your body your physical body is where the spirit of God is being housed. And now your spirit man has become stronger that your spirit man does not want your flesh, your body, your container of the spirit to go anywhere because it does not want to be quenched. What does quenching mean? When the Holy Spirit is quenched, it means something is done that is offensive to the Holy Spirit. What's offensive to the Holy Spirit? Someone who places themselves, like I said, you come off a fast. You, it's not. Don't go. Don't go to a club. Don't say, "Oh, my fast is over. I'm going to a club." This, that, and the other. That's not. That's not good. You need to be around um, uh, something godly, something inspirational, something motivational, something that is going to be pleasing to the spirit of God. Yes. You can't come off of a fast and then say, oh, I want to come off a fast. And then you watching pornography. Yes, I said it. Oh, why is she stepping on toes tonight? Because I got to say it. Can't do that. Can't do that. God is not pleased with that. And you will feel the Holy Spirit. You can't you can't sit and watch um, these televisions, these devices. All of these things are portals. Oh, Lord, she going there. Yes, she is. I'm going there. They're portals. What are portals? Openings. There's There are openings and opportunities for different influences to come into your being. So if you have the television turned turn to something that's carnal, after you coming off of a fast and it's something where it's a whole bunch of sexual scenes, a whole bunch of profanity, what is that doing to your, the, the Holy Ghost is going to be quenched. And before you know it, all the work that you did in fasting and seeking the face of the Father, the, the Holy Spirit begins to pull back because God is holy. God is holy. And we have to reverence him and we have to make sure that we, what all of what we do, all of what we do is worship to the Lord. And that worship has to be what? In spirit and in truth. It has to be pure. We come before the Lord with holy hands and a what? pure heart. So we have to make sure that we are in places that are pleasing to the spirit of God. We just can't, we can't do it. We can't do it. I'm talking to those who are walking in this walk of salvation and you have come to a place of understanding what it means to discipline yourself. We can't do it anymore. Can't do that. When God, when God has been working on you, when you've been fasting and when you've been praying, God, he, he's, he's, changing you you're on the potter's wheel he's molding you he's shaping you he's chiseling off all of those things that are, are that are not of him and he's he's refining you so that you can be a polished stone so as he has is polishing you you can't you can't allow for your flesh to turn you back to going into car, carnal things oh lord look at that i don't know what did that oh I don't know. That was something, something went off there. <laughs> Hallelujah. But my, my, the, I, I just want us to understand that when God is moving us and God is taking us from glory to glory, we have to maintain that. We have to sustain that. And I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to say this to you. As we grow older, if God should allow us to see 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old, we are blessed. But we know that every every milestone of our life, we are getting closer to our day of expiration. We are getting closer to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as God is moving, listen closely to what I'm saying. I want you to follow me now. As God is moving you from glory to glory, as you fast and pray, remember from glory to glory. What is the highest level of glory? Being present with the Father. See? So now we're learning. That's why I tell older people, don't say that you can't fast and pray. Don't do that. Yes, you can. You can still fast. Because God is taking you from glory to glory. Every time you fast, he's taking you from, the, from glory to glory. And as you're going from glory to glory, it's a step getting closer to him, meeting him face to face. Highest level of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Did y'all understand that? That's why it's important as you're moving up the levels, right? You cannot afford to allow for yourself to fall back. You can't allow for yourself to get back into a carnal place because you're trying, you're make we're, we all, those of us who believe we're, we're, make, we want to make heaven our home. We want to be with the one who first loved us before we even thought about loving ourselves. So what do we have to do? We have to operate and move accordingly. You don't move and go to a higher level to say, oh, now I'm free to just, you know, sin and do what I need. No, we just read it in the scripture. Right. We just read it in the word that it's for us to be able to resist temptation for for us to be able to turn from the things that the enemy tries to present. We just read that in first Corinthians seven, five, then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of this, uh, because of the lack of self-control. See, when we go to glory to glory, we are gaining more self-control because the Holy Spirit is becoming more defined and powerful in our lives. You're going from glory to glory. The highest level of glory is being face to face with the Father. So as you are going up higher and higher, you cannot afford for the enemy to tempt you to fall back and go to a place where you are in a carnal state of mind. That's why you got to keep yourself covered with the blood. How do we keep ourselves covered with the blood? Oh, with the blood, isn't that cannibalism? I get so tired of people twisting stuff. You all, you all know what we mean. You know that we're not talking about uh, uh, blood. We're talking about this spiritually. We talk about the blood that was shed on Calvary. Jesus did that for a purpose. We know that blood is powerful. Blood is powerful because that is what is in our body. How God created us so that we can function. It's a, the circulatory system. It operates going from our brain down all the way to the soles of our feet. It causes for our organs to function. It's because of the blood flow. Right now, we know that the blood of Jesus is powerful. It will never lose its power. It was shed on Calvary for our sins. He was the su supreme sacrifice. We were brought with a we, we were bought with a price. A ransom was paid for us so that we can get back into our rightful covenant place with our heavenly father. That's what we mean by being covered with the blood. So when we say we're covered with the blood, we're asking for the blood of, that was shed on Calvary to keep us, to cover us. So that we do not fall prey to the things of the carnal world. Oh, I hope y'all getting this on tonight. Yes, we're talking about fasting. The benefits and the blessings of fasting. Let we have to stay in our rightful, rightful place. If God done brought you from glory. You stay there. Don't you come down. Don't you come down. You can't come down. You, you stay with God. You know, everything else around you may be crumbling and falling. But see, when, when God is holding you up, the only thing you have to do is rest and abide in that. Don't let the things of the world. Don't, don't let people, because they pass you in a car, cause for you to start cussing. Don't, don't, uh-uh. See what I'm saying? See, the enemy slick. See, self-control. Somebody cutting you off in the street, that shouldn't make you get upset. Not when you done came off of a fast and you've been praying. You shouldn't be fussing and arguing with your spouse in your house and you just came off of fasting and praying. Uh-uh. You su you supposed to be on a another level in glory. So in your house, when people walk in your house, or if you invite people in your house, they should feel the presence of God. I I, I my my college friend um Doug Allen, um, and uh he he was a, a, a beautiful soul and he was he was my brother. He was he was a true brother to me. I thank God for him. We're still um friends he, and we still check in on one another. Um and he knew my 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 dad and uh, when my dad used to come to the campus, my dad used to take us out and speak to us and tell us to make sure y'all finish, y'all gotta finish and encourage us to graduate. We just used to have such a good time. And um he said, Dawn, I remember one time I, I came to pick you up. For us to go to chapel. And he said, I opened up the door. And when I opened up the door, he said, Don't I felt like a force, just like pow, hit me at the door. And he said, Do you remember I had asked you? I was like, Don, what you what you what you was doing? And you said, Oh, I just finished praying. He said, Dawn, I never felt anything like that before. He said, But to this day I remember it. Let me tell you something. The, the, the power of God is nothing to be played with. It's tangible and it's real. When you pray and when you seek the face of the Father and when you make a commitment to, to be in that place wherein you are disciplined, 
You are disciplined and abiding by his statutes. Reading that word, fasting and praying. Don't you know other people are going to feel it and other people are going to be blessed by it? I always say salvation is the gift that keeps on giving. We walk into salvation, not just so that we can get a ticket into heaven, so that we can also help somebody else along the way. And see, you can't help nobody if you're going to, if you're going to keep doing what you was doing that wasn't right. Because people, when you say you say, they're looking for something different. You can't, huh? I'm sorry, you can't be up in... These places and these spaces that don't look right. And you talk about, oh, I'm a man and I'm a woman of God because it's, it's going to, it's a bad reflection. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. That's why it's so important that we got to stand. Once again, we got to stay in that place when God has taken us to glory, one level from glory to glory to glory. We got to remain in that state of mind and we cannot come down. Hallelujah. We cannot come down. We got to maintain what God has given us. We have to maintain and respect what God has given us. We have to have an understanding that we have been placed in this earth and for a purpose and for a reason. And for that, we have to make sure that we are committed. We are committed to doing what God has called us to do. All right, let's look at Esther 4.16. Esther 4.16, it says, go, go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. All right. This is Mordecai. This was Esther talking. Uh, uh, he was talking to Esther and letting her know. He was giving her a plan. Let me tell you something. Whenever a plan is made and fasting is involved, it's because God is about to do a move. Now, if you don't know the story about Esther and how she became um, uh, the queen, um, read the story. But uh, it was um, important that this was something that was set on purpose and intentional. And see, our solemn assembly, we set it at the top of the year, is intentional. So that God can give us insight, wisdom, and strength to get through the course of the year. So when you are called or when someone, especially when a man of God, Mordecai was a man of God, right? When you are, when someone is calling you to go to a place of, of, of prayer and fasting, do it and do it right quickly because it has an outcome. For every um, action, there is a reaction. And you know what the uh, reaction to, to fasting and, pr and praying? Signs, wonders, and miracles. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That, that is the results of you fasting and praying, especially when you are told to go on a fast and a prayer and it's assignment, it's intentional, you've been called, you've been gathered, you better jump on it. Don't deny it. Jump on it because signs, wonders, and miracles are on the way. When God gives that command and God, when God is giving that assignment, that task for fasting and for praying, it's because he, he is working. He is working. And see, whatever we see manifested in the natural, it's because prayer and fasting has gone on in the background. Because prayer and fasting is a part of the spiritual realm. Whatever we see in the natural has begun first in the supernatural. Whatever we see in the natural, it has first occurred in the supernatural. It has occurred in the spirit realm through fasting and praying. God sees when we fast in prayer. God honors it. That's why he calls us to do it. That's why he calls them. Go gather them up. He told them. He said, go he do it. He was giving them, go gather them up. Tell the Jews who are in Susa, fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days. Let me tell some of y'all are going through things in your body. You're going through some situations in your body. Find you some saints who know how to pray and fast and say, listen, I need for you to touch and agree with me. And I need for you to go into a fast and I need you to go into prayer three days, if you would, with me. Knowing that knowing that these are trusting, faithful, dedicated uh, prayer warriors and intercessors who understand the power of fasting and praying. Some of y'all are going through things and come on, y'all listening. Open up your ears. Come on. Open up your ears. Some of y'all are going through things in your marriage and the enemy wants to 
destroy your marriage. The enemy is trying to operate and he's trying to just meddle in your marriage. He's even gotten to a place where and he's trying to give you evil imagination in your mind. God going to bless you with a beautiful man of God. God done bless you with a beautiful woman of God. But the enemy, he don't like marriage. He don't like it. So he's getting even in your mind where he's trying to make that the person that he has been designated to walk this walk with you. He's God is God. God has placed that person in the enemy is trying to make you turn on that person. Let go find, go find you a man, woman of God. Say, so can you touch and agree with me? I, I need prayer for my marriage. I need prayer for my marriage. I'm going to tell you this. God going to turn things around. Some of you all are on, in your workplace. Hallelujah. Some of you are in your workplace. And you're dealing with situations where you have put all that you can into making things work. It's not appreciated. It's not honored. But God sees your faithfulness. And you've been, I, I need a change. I, I need something else. Lord, you know my situation. Find your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Ask them to go on a fast. Ask them to go on a, a time to fa call them together and say, I need you to touch and agree with me through fasting and praying and believe in God that he's going to bring me out of this place of despair on my job and that he's going to take me to something that's better. That's going to make a proper provisions for me to have the proper amount of income to take care of my home, my family and the things that need to be taken care of wherein I am not being stressed out and feeling as if I'm living a life of strife. God going to turn it around signs, wonders, and miracles. That is the result of fasting and praying. Oh, yes. Yes. God, God don't call us to do things just, oh, I, I love God because he could if he wanted to. He could just be like, because I said so. That's the way God could be that way because I said so. But God is so loving. He's so compassionate. He's so understanding. His mercies, they are new every morning that God gives us opportunity to put whatever we need to put in as far as the word so that we can connect. See, because some of us, some of us would never connect with God if things didn't happen in our lives. Oh, I got it good. Some And some of us, we are so foolish to get into a place to think that you all the good that's in your life is because you did it. Oh, please. Are you kidding me? It's nothing but the grace of God. That's it. And trust and believe. Somebody prayed for you. Somebody in maybe four or five generations back said, Lord, bless my children. See, 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 see. And they put up a prayer for you 50 years ago before you was even placed in the earth. And that's why you're successful. Don't you get it twisted? Don't you get it twisted? Nothing but the grace of God. So we got to understand who we are. We got to understand who God is. God, God is so gracious. He's so kind. He's so loving. He's so compassionate. He wants the best for us. But some of us, if we never went through anything, we probably would never pray. We probably would never seek the face of the father. So that's why it's important that when you're going through the good times, you still give God glory. Going through the bad times, still give him glory. The in-between times, still give him glory. No matter what. Let a continuous praise be in your mouth, giving God glory because all what he's going to do and even and you giving him glory. God is working it out. He's honoring you. He's going to honor the, the he's going to honor your faithfulness. He's going to honor your dedication. He's going to honor your reverence towards him. So give God glory and don't get to a place where things have to become low in your life before you look up and say, Lord, I need you every day. You need to wake up, and say, Lord, I need you. I know I do. I said, Lord, get me through this day. Before I leave the house, I pray with my family. And I said, Lord, get me through this day. I need you to help me through this day. I can't do it by myself. I need you, Lord. And I thank God because he does just that. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. Miracle worker. Hallelujah. He's always there. Hallelujah. And just when you think that, oh, you, oh my goodness, I'm alone. You never, let me tell you, you never alone. I thank God. God will always bring somebody in the midst. Hallelujah. The ram in the thicket. He'll always have somebody around that's going to come 
And that's going to be that, that, that word of encouragement that, that's going to give you that push of strength that you need so that you can endure and carry on. Fasting, the blessings and the benefits of fasting and praying, there's nothing to compare to it. I'm going to give you this last scripture here. It says, Joel 2.12, Joel 2.12, even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. See, God, God, God want the best for us. Even let me tell you something. If you feel like I just I, I, I'm no good, I just feel like I, I, I I've, I've been in a doubtful state of mind. I feel like my faith has been depleted. Get on a fast. Put yourself on a fast. Give all of that to God. Your mourning, your weeping, give that all to God. Let him take that. Let him take all of that. Let him deal with all of that. Return to the Lord, your God, because he is gracious and compassionate. He don't mind. God just want us to come to him. He's slow to anger, abounding in love, and he relents sending calamity. God don't want, God don't want to do that. He wants for us to live life and live it abundantly. That's why he gave us his son. So on tonight, those scriptures, take them back with you. I hope you wrote them down. You had your pen and your paper, your Bible or your device, or wherever, how you are able to uh, get the word of God, read the word of God. Take those scriptures and go over them again. Go over them again. And in the in this year. Whether whenever you're called, as we read in the scripture, whenever you are called to fasting and praying, jump on it. Don't hesitate and do it joyfully. Always have your antennas up when you're called to fast and pray. Oh, this this what's what's going on in this season? Oh, God need for me to put this time in because signs, wonders and miracles are about to happen. Blessings are about to flow. Breakthrough is about to happen. And and so so the, the, the atmosphere, there's about to be a paradigm shift. Because every time when we activate ourselves in that, God is going to react to that and he's going to perform wonders. Hallelujah. Beyond what we can think, imagine or believe. So whenever you're called to fasting and praying, be joyful about it, be happy about it and be expedient. Whenever you're going through, when there's something that you feel like. You know, I, I do my normal dedication, meditation and prayer. But Lord, I, something is happening, whether it's in your relationship, your marriage, dealing with your children, dealing with people on your do- job, dealing with things in your community. Call and assemble those people of God that you know and ask them to touch and agree with you and go on a, a time of fasting and praying. Things are going to change. God gives us these tools to put into our spiritual toolkits so that we just don't survive, so that we can abound. We can abound in this life that God has given us, living it abundantly. So I pray tonight that you receive something from the word as we have studied the scriptures. Let them do something for you. Let this year set aside that time for fasting and praying. Set aside that time. If you if you take one one day out of the week, I know um, in, in our ministry Friday, Friday um, 6 p.m. up until Saturday 12 noon, we turn our plates down. Take, do something wherein you are incorporating fasting as a routine in your life. And it doesn't matter how old you are. God will give you the insight on how to do it. If you are older in life and you know it's certain things that you have to do to take care of your body, do the Daniel fast. Because on the Daniel fast, you're eating vegetables and you're eating fruit. And those things, let me tell you something. The best thing that was created on the earth for us to consume to make sure that we stay in good health, fruits and vegetables. So do your body right. Fast, pray, meditate on the word of God. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all things will be added unto you. 
I bless God for you on tonight. Thank you for joining in with me. Go be the great person that God has designed you to be. And until we meet or speak again, I pray that the blessing of the Lord continue to make you rich, adding no sorrow to it. Good night. Love you.